So in this video, we're going to see how to deploy an application that we built into a Docker image. So after you package your application in a Docker image and save it in the private repository, you need to somehow deploy it on a development server or integration server or whatever other environment. In this specific video, we are using a Docker registry of Amazon Web Services um, called ECR. That's where we have pushed our own application Docker image and we're going to use Docker Compose to deploy that application. This video is part of a Docker tutorial series. So if you want to actually follow through the whole process of developing an application, packaging it into a Docker image, pushing it into a private repository, and then finally deploying it on an application server, here's a link to that video series so you can check that out. So again, back to our initial overview, we have gone through all these uh, individual steps. So we built an image uh, just like a Jenkins server would do uh, and we pushed it into a repository. So now let's actually simulate a development environment. So let's imagine we have logged in to a development server and we want to run our image that we just pushed the repository. So our my app image and the MongoDB image, uh, both the database and the Mongo Express on the development server. So the my app image will be pulled from private repository of AWS. The, and the two Mongo containers will be pulled from the Docker hub. So let's see actually how that would work. So usually again, you have developed uh, your application, you're done with it and you have created uh, your own Docker image, right? Now, in order to start an application on a development server, you would need all the containers that make up that application environment. Okay, so we have MongoDB and Mongo Express already. So what we are gonna do is here, we're gonna add a new container in the list, um, which is gonna be our own image. So let's go ahead and copy the image from our repository. So let's actually use the 1.0. So again, remember we said that this image name is a shortcut for having a docker.io.library um, slash uh, Mongo with uh, like a specific version. So instead of that, because we are pulling these images from a Docker hub, we can actually skip that um, repository domain in front of the images. Uh, but here, because we are pulling it from a private repository. So if we were to specify our image like this, Docker will think that our image resides on Docker Hub. So we try to pull it from Docker Hub. And of course it won't find it because we have to tell Docker, go and look at this repository with this repository name and this tag. And of course, in order to be able to pull this image or the Docker Compose to be able to pull this image, the environment where you're executing this Docker Compose file has to be logged into a Docker repository. So here as the development server has to pull the image from the repository, what we would need to do on the development server is actually do a Docker login before we execute the Docker Compose. And obviously you don't need a Docker login for Docker Hub. Those Mongo images um, will be pulled freely. Okay, so the next thing that we have to configure are the ports because obviously we want to open the ports. If we go back, we see that our application runs on port 3000. So the port of the container or the, where the container is listening uh, on is 3000. And here we can open the port on the host machine. So it's going to be 3000 map to 3000. Um, we have actually the environment variables inside of the Docker file, but obviously we could have configured them in the Docker compose, um, just like this. So it's an alternative. So this will be a complete Docker compose file that will be used on the development server to deploy all the, all the applications inside. 
So again, if we're trying to simulate a development server, the first step will be to do, do, do the Docker login. In this case, you have this on command uh, for logging into the AWS repository, which I have done already in this uh, terminal. So the next step is to have the Docker compose file available on this development server because we have to execute the Docker compose file because we're simulating here. Uh, the way I would do it is I'm going to create a Mongo YAML file in the current directory where I am. I'm going to copy this and save. So now I have my Mongo YAML file. And now we can start all three containers using Mongo, uh, docker compose command minus F up. And here we see that app started on 3000 and MongoDB and Express started as well. So let's check again now. And here we saw the database is uh, lost every time uh, we recreate a container. Um, and of course that's not good. And we're going to learn how to preserve the database data uh, between the container restarts using Docker volumes in the later tutorials, um, because this is not an ideal state. Okay. So now that we have a uh, database in a collection, let's actually refresh and our application works as well. Let's check. Uh, awesome. So our application works. Let's refresh this one as well. And there is actually one thing that I needed to change in the code to connect Node.js with uh, uh, MongoDB. So let's actually go and look at that. So this is my uh, these are my handlers, you know, Node.js where I connect to the MongoDB database. So the URIs are the same. And what I changed here is that it was a local host before. So instead of local host, I changed it to MongoDB because this actually is a name of the container or of the service that we um, specify here. So this actually leads back to the Docker network and how Docker compose takes care of it is that in the URI or when I connect one application in a Docker container with another one in another Docker container, I don't have to use this uh, local host uh, anymore. Actually, I wouldn't even need to use the port even because I have all that information. So the host name and the port number in that configuration. So my application will be able to connect to MongoDB using the service name. And because of that, you don't have to specify here a local host and the port number, which is actually even more advantage when you consider using Docker containers to run all of your applications, because it makes the connectivity between them even more easier. And that actually concludes the, this uh, diagram that we saw previously. We have gone through all of the steps where we saw uh, how to develop uh, a JavaScript application locally with Docker containers. Then we saw how to build them into an image, uh, just like a continuous integration build will do it. Then we pushed it into a private repository and we simulated a development server where we pulled the image from a uh, private repository and the other images from the Docker hub, where we started the whole application setup with our uh, own application and the two uh, Mongo applications uh, using a Docker compose, which is how you would deploy an application on a dev server so that now testers or other developers will be able to um, access the development server and actually try out the application that you just deployed. Or you can also use it for demos. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to like it. This is a video series, so I will create a new one every week. So if you want to be notified whenever a new video comes out, then subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions, if something wasn't clear in the video, please post them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them. So thank you and see you in the next video.